Hello everyone and welcome back to a new tutorial video talking about the control rig and how to use basic IK nodes in the control rig setup. So this we're going to be looking at my game Mimic and adding a control rig basic IK setup to our Mimic creature. So let's jump in and take a look at how we achieve this. Okay, so here we are inside my game Mimic and we've got our character here. And I want to add some custom animation to him and a good way of doing that is via making a control rig. So I'm just going to delete this one here. So I make a brand new one for you from scratch. So we're going to go to our skeleton and we're going to go right click, create, and we're going to create a control rig. And there's our control rig. Now in the control rig, we want to set up a basic IK setup for the various limbs. And so there's a node that you can use called a basic IK. And the basic IK is a pretty cool tool as it simplifies a lot of the work in there. So let's explain a few things in here. Item A, item B, and effector item. These are the bones that we'll be moving around. So the effector item, whenever you see the word effector, it means the basically the hand, essentially the end bone that you'll be dragging around that will influence the other bones, that's your effector. So in this case, we want that to be the hand. So I'm going to do the hand L. We're going to pull that in there and use a little arrow button to assign it to hand L. Item B is going to be the next bone up. So that'd be the lower arm. And then the upper arm here will be the type um, our item A bone. So it goes upper, lower, hand. Okay. So the effect of item is the one we're moving around. So we'll be moving around the hand and that should affect the rest of them. Now for this, we do need to give it the effect of transform. So we want to have some kind of control to use the drag around rather than dragging around the actual bones. So the way you do that is if you find the bone you want to make your effector, so in this case my hand, I'm going to right click on it, go to uh, new, and we're going to do new control. So you can do new control here, but what this will do is it'll add the control to the hand bone, which means that by default it's going, the hand bone is going to control the control, which we don't want to be the case, when it be the other way around. So we don't want the control to be attached to the hand. So you can do it this way, and all you do is right click on this and unparent. You can totally do that. Um, or there's a shortcut way. If you want, you can just go to the hand L, new, and choose add controls for selected. This will run some Python script, which basically does what we just did to create the hand control over here. Now on all our controls, we can customize their shape, appearance, uh, color, all that sort of thing. So I'm going to change this to uh, some sort of box. So with it selected, I'm going to go over to the right hand side and change the shape here to a box. And we'll do thick. And I'm going to scale it up in the shape transform here to two by two by two. Okay, and there is our box. So with that, I can now drag that out and choose get control. And this will give me a transform that I want to use for the effector. So there is our effector control. Now, now the way uh, arms work, they have something called a pole vector. And the pole vector is basically which way are things meant to bend towards. So the elbow, for example, indicates where the bend should happen and which way it should point. And that's what we want here. Because if I just plug this in as is, you can get some just weird positions here where nothing looks right. Yeah, it all looks a bit goofy. So... We want to put a pole vector in. So the pole vector is a location, or it could be a direction. It's basically a vector somewhere in that space. So what we want to do is we want to make the lower arm bone be the pole vector. That's the elbow. So I'm going to go to my lower arm. And once again, I'm going to go new control for selected. And I can select it, and there it is. Okay. Now... I normally want to drag this away a little bit, make it a bit easier to see where it's pointing it to. So I'm going to drag it over here. And I want to probably change the shape of it to give a better indication of which way it's pointing. So a circle is no good for that. So you can use an arrow or you can use a pyramid. They're quite fun to see or a triangle. Uh, let's use a pyramid. And change the scale of that. A little bit bigger, I think. Two by two by two. Yeah. And what we're also going to do is rotate it around so it points the pyramid here to the elbow. 
So that's rotating in the Z axis, the blue one, by 90. Like that. Okay. So that points to the correct pole. Now, for the pole vector here, I need a vector. So when I drag this out to get its transform, that's no good. The transform is not a location, but it does have it inside of it. So if you hit a little arrow, expands open, you'll see the translation. You can drag that into the pole vector there. Okay. Ah, problem I forgot to do <laughs> is when we move the bone back here, we want to reset the bone. Oh, we want to set the offset of the bone. When you hit compile, it goes back to where it, it to where it originally was. So I'm gonna bring it back here and we're gonna right click on the bone and set the offset transform from the current position. Okay. Okay. So next we want to do is change the primary axis and the secondary axis. So the primary axis is which axis is the bone going to be moving along on the arm. So here you pick your secondary bone, the item B, which would be lower arm. And basically it's which direction is it going towards the hand. Um, so the easy way of doing that is look at the skeleton over here. And if I select the lower arm, I can see it's the X axis, this red one, that points towards the hand. So I want the x-axis to be the primary axis, which it is already. Good. The secondary axis, though, is the one that points towards the pole vector. So go back to my skeleton. And the elbow here, we've got the y pointing that way. But the elbow is actually pointing backwards. So I need it to be negative of 1 in the y. So let's change that to negative 1. Hit compile. And that's looking a lot better now. Now, with all that plugged in, without having to do anything else here, I can click and drag the box around and get much more believable IK movement from the uh, from just the hand moving around. And obviously, you can rotate the hand as you wish as well, like so. So you can do exactly the same process for the other arm and the legs as well. So there you go, that is how to use the basic IK node to add a very simple IK setup for things like limbs, like arms and legs. So go ahead, add them to your character, and you'll be able to add more control to your character as you see fit. If you like this video and want to see more content from myself, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where your support really does help the channel out. From just $1 a month, you get access to all our videos early, plus many other benefits too. So a massive thank you to all our patrons, YouTube members, and everyone who is supporting the channel. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.